We're speaking to Liu Sui for Breast Cancer Fight Club. She's also a cancer survivor. We're so honored to be speaking to you this morning, Sui Li. Thank you so much for taking time to speak to us here on The Light Breakfast. Hi, I'm Sui Li. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I think it is uh, my pleasure to be here, to be with all of you. Good morning. <laughs> well... <laughs> Sweetly, before we start uh, to talk yeah. about your cancer diagnosis and all that, can you tell us a little bit more about your life before the diagnosis? Before the diagnosis, uh, I work uh, in a pharmaceutical line so that uh, I, my life is uh, chasing the doctor's back. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I sell Botox at the time. Oh. So it's like, yeah, yeah. So I, grab, uh, I work in the government, so my life was quite rushed. Quite rush and then so every second is, is my golden time so when the talk says is free I will, gra- I will grab him and okay yeah normal that I, I exercise in the weekends uh, I think it's a normal life uh, as a 30 years old ladies working at home working at home and you just got married then as well didn't you uh, yes I just got married I think uh, when I uh, discovered my I have a breast lump uh, when I was, I was uh, on honeymoon so, uh, oh. yes, well. wow. yes. Okay. Yes. But because you were in the pharmaceutical line, did you know a lot about breast cancer? Actually, no. I think cancer is a rare word to me. Mm. It's very rare. It's, it's, I never, I know cancer, but then it's never that near to me. Okay. No, not okay. even my friends. No. Okay. So during your honeymoon, you discovered the lump. Is yes. that why you decided to go check for breast cancer? Yes, uh, I go for check for lump. I think um, how I discovered I had a, a breast lump was a, uh, there was a huge mirror in the hotel. And that's what I say. I would say I'm even size of my breast. And then it's like, hey, so I asked her, what should I do next? So I, I tell my best friends. So I asked her, uh, you, I found something wrong. I said, uh, what should I do? So my friend, she recommend me to go for guy mm. So at that time, so immediately after, uh, after I return, I think I, I wait for another month. I said there might be something wrong. My friend said, you wait another month and see where it perhaps will disappear. So I said, okay, I, I wait. But another month gone. And I said, the lung was still there. Mm. So I said, okay, I went to a guy So the guy and then first guy me, they asked me to go for a biopsy. And then I said, okay. My friend said, hey, wait, wait, wait. You wait, uh, go for a second opinion. And uh, even I, I went for three opinions. And the same doctors recommended, said, uh, uh, look at my age. He said, I'm quite young. So perhaps uh, it's, it will be okay, but suggest you remove it. Uh, I said, okay, okay. I think uh, no need to do, but I'll say, I said, you should remove it. I don't want a, a bone in my body. Mm. So I take a very quick decision. I said, I remove. Mm. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, but it's just when you remove, I think I, I, by the time, because three doctors saying that uh, it was not cancerous. So I said, ah, okay. I said, remove, that should be fine. But by the time is when, when I recovered uh, in the hospital, um, the doctor visited me and then she said, uh, Sweetly, I, I have a, a bad news for you. Uh, I said, yeah, doctor, I don't want to hear. And then she said, uh, you're glad already. Uh, the next two days when the report uh, out, uh, uh, that might be a uh, cancer. And then I said, doctor, why you say that? The doctor said she found a lot of uh, blood vessels when she removed my lung. So they said, uh, not 100%, but 90%. And now I look at the doctor, what <laughs> you say is confirmed. But she said, you get ready. So okay. I think, uh, yeah, so I have a uh, few days time before I got the report. I, I did a lot of uh, homework. I, I asked doctor, so doctor, so from now until the report day, what would you recommend me to do? Uh, the, my doctor, she said, the surgeon, she said that, just wait and see. You you don't do anything because you cannot do anything mm. because that already happened. So you might think that, um, uh, what is the treatment? I would she said, it's co- if it is confirmed, I will tell you the treatment options. We, we, we will see. On, uh, we, we will discuss on that day. Mm. So I think I, uh, so I have a quite uh, open mind. I said, I accepted it uh, very soon. So, I have a. I'm ready. I'm ready for that news on that yeah. time. How so, long? Yeah. How, sorry, sorry, Bell. When you first found out at your honeymoon, how long did it take before you actually got the did the operation? 
um, honeymoon is in November, and November, and then one month mid of December, I went for the first opinion, and then three in two weeks time early, early January I went for third opinion, and then that time because he's a doctor was on holiday, mm. it's New Year, so I awaited the doctor. I said, doctor, doctor, please faster come back, and then so my surgery a second week of uh, January. All right. So, so it was a quite a fast, very fast, uh, yep. fast, fast move. Okay. Within two months. Mm. So, what yeah. happened on that day when the doctor came back to you with your report and confirmed that it was a cancerous tumor that was growing in you? I think, uh, although I have, I'm ready lah. But when the doctor said it's like she, uh, that, doctor is quite uh, experienced. So she said, show me the report, and then she said it's like so. This is your report. She did tell me. She asked me to read myself, and then immediately, of course, I think immediate. Although it's ready, but you you will cry. Mm. And then I was <laughs> I said, doctor, so what is next? Mm. And I I think this is my reaction. I cry for sure, mm. cry. Mm. And then she said like, so so how? I I think I think that time my husband with me, so uh, he he just uh, tapped on my shoulder saying that. You will be fine. No worry. I said, I haven't started. How you know I'll be fine? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't. As husbands, we never know what to say, though. You know. Yes. Yes. What, what did you want him to to say? I also don't know because I think she shocked and I also shocked. It's like so both of us is uh we look at doctor say, mm, doctor, <laughs> what is next? Um. Yeah. So I think. So the doctor wait me to come down. I think about one minute. So we come down. So the doctor, uh, I think the first question he asked. So doctor, uh, will I die? I I think the first question I asked, and then the second is like I said, uh, could I still have a family? Mm-hmm. I do have baby. I think this is the two question I asked. Mm-hmm. Um, and doctor that time, he said, do too far yet. Let's treat you first. Um, so she take white paper and then she write down. So. I would suggest you to do. I think she should write down all the possibilities, the the advice that she give, treatment advice that she uh, will be given, and she said. So I let you to decide what your what is your decision. Mm. Okay. So did you decide there and then, or did you take a while before you decide what treatment you want to go for? Did you go seek a second opinion? Mm, no, I didn't go for a second because this doctor was my third doctor, so yeah. I'm very comfortable. I very comfortable with her, and the way she she explained to me, and she asked me very clearly. Firstly, is on the, what happened to you now. She said you are currently here, and then she said you stay true, but you have aggressive cancer, and then so she said that so I have an option for you, and this is the option A B C, and she said what is the positive side of this treatment, the negative side. If I don't take, if I delay, what will happen? And um, the third question I asked that time after she listed that all, I asked doctor how much does it cost. I think it's very concerned. I say it's like I said I must make sure that I, I am afford uh, mm. to to do this kind of treatment. Mm. So and then the fourth ta- the fourth question I remember asked is how soon, how soon doctor I can receive this treatment. Mm. So the doctor said immediately after your wound recover, um, is the two weeks later. Two weeks later, so she said you can start at the treatment. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, so, so you said, had a you had a lumpectomy, right? Uh, yes, lumpectomy means they Be- took out the lump only. That was a uh, quite uh, lucky, I said, because doctor that time when she do uh, when she did the surgery, she does not suspect suspect it's a cancer. Mm. But if she suspect it was cancer, I think I will, I will have a mastectomy because my lump was quite big. Right. So you were yes. already stage at stage two that time. Uh, yes. Yes. And But before found, before mm. that, you didn't feel before? anything. You didn't see any lumps. Oh. Internet. Yeah, okay. it's like yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying because you were when mm. you when you discovered that you have you had cancer, you were already at stage two. Before mm. that, you didn't realize that there was anything dif- different, or you didn't see the lump. You didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I thought it's a uh, because uh, I think you uh, in in my old time, it's it's an even size of uh, of of breast. It should be not common. Yeah. It's just like your left hand and right hand. One hand is bigger from mm. the other yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's okay. But only on that time is I found it's quite quite abnormal because when I wear clothes, you can feel quite tight on the other side, 
and then he says like, hey, and and that's why I look at the mirror. I said it is quite obvious that is some tick. It's just a lump mm. at, 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 at the part. Mm. Uh, only that time. So doctor did 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 um did ask, don't you feel abnormal? That is a very um. I said, doctor, I I do not I do not realize until I feel it. Mm. So I believe that that time no, the awareness was not there. Really not there. Mm. Mm. Okay. So how did your life change for you after you were diagnosed with breast cancer? I uh, I think I sayang myself more, <laughs> sayang myself more, and appreciate a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, appreciate uh my life is like uh even it's like uh, the single breath that I have now is like uh, it is really not your own effort, but it's the effort from a lot of people. Then it's like the medical team. They, they they guide you through and then they help you through the journey. It was an eight month journey. Even now, I, I still uh, stay a uh, close relationship with the nurses and the doctors. It's like I'm still greeting them when I see them every time, every mm-hmm. year. And then my family, like, I would say, is like really thankful. Without them, I don't think I could be living as good as now. Yeah. You moved and back support- in with your parents, didn't you? When when you were diagnosed. Yes, that time because only me and my uh my with my husband, so two of us. So my mom said it would be better for someone to take care of you, uh, on every seconds uh, uh to take care. So and then we I need transportation and I need to go back to and forth from the hospital. I need a good chef, and then I need a <laughs> so so my mom said so my husband agreed that so my mom can take good care of me. So I went home. Did you quit your job immediately? At that time, yes, I quit my job. I think there should be another thing. Is like, uh, the employer they will say is like you better quit your job because you, uh, you need eight months mm-hmm. to recover, and then we're not sure what will happen next. So, so in that really saying that, so I said okay, I I I got you, and then I I quit my job. Mm. But that's what the good thing is like when I quit my job. It's like I can fully concentrate on uh, recovery. How were the treatments though? How many rounds of chemo did you get? Uh, uh, some people get so, radiotherapy as well, and then medication, right? Yes. So my uh, my I was uh, I hormone negative, so I do not have any uh, medication to take. So uh, I had four rounds of chemo and twenty five times of uh, radio mm. radiation. So every I think I have a. Uh, uh, I managed to take uh, the head all on time, mm. meaning that I I recover well. I take it well, mm. so I finish it in uh, March in five months. In five months, I completed all. Wow. So wow. everything okay. goes well, and my blood result well. Mm. Any everything. side effects from the treatment that made it really difficult for you? Uh, yes, the side effect. I think in chemo is the the side effect. I think it was the. Second time of the chemo, I think one of the drugs will will weaken my heart. So every time before, I I I uh I went back for the next chemo. The day before, I need to check for my heart. Mm. So there was one time doctor said they need to have a measurement. I forgot how many percentage. I think it's seventy six seventy five. My heart was a sixty percent. So the doctor said uh, you you better take good care. If this time you cannot recover back. Then we will suggest to change your drugs. Mm. And the second day, I'm not sure why I have a uh, difficulty in breathing. Mm. So I quickly asked my son, "Mom, I cannot breathe." You quickly send me to the doctor. So I went to the hospital. So the doctor, I think he gave me a medicine. So after that, I relieved. So but after that, I changed drugs. I think that was the I allergy to to that drug. Mm. So in the mid time, I change I change drugs. Yeah, that is for the chemo. Mm-hmm. And for the, I think hair hair loss to me, I think it's okay. I appreciate a hair loss because there's only time I have water. I said you never, <laughs> you will never shave your hair. I said you see, I'm very pretty. But I forgot to take picture, so I don't have any picture of when I was bald. And for the radiation, it is I think it's better than the chemo mm-hmm. because the chemo is like every day you do not know what day to what happened to your body. You are good, but the next morning you are like body aching. It's like if you get punched by every part, and then you will feel tired, and then you will feel emotion. You will feel bad. You just don't want to talk to people. Mm. I think that was a quite 
I don't know how to say, but it's not good. Mm. Uh, constipation, I think constipation is the side effect I, I hate. Mm. You cannot go to the toilet, and then, but you need to go, and that is quite really suffer. Mm. Were you eating normally at, at that time? I gained weight. <laughs> really? I gained weight. Yes, I gained weight. So I have good appetite. So the nurses said when I was on the daycare, so uh, uh, all the cancer patients are receiving their drugs. And then the doctor said, Lu Sui Li, you gain weight. I said, yeah, I gain weight. <laughs> I, said, I said, it was a good thing. Yeah, all lose, only you gain. So I said, I have very good appetite. What you want me to do? Mm. I think that was, uh, so I have, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm quite good. Except for the pale, very pale because of the of the chemo, mm. but I, I I gain weight. Wow, so that's I, that's good news because most of the cancer survivors that we speak to, they they have no appetite to yeah. eat at all during chemo. Mm. I I would thank to my mom. I think I think this she 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 did a lot of homework. Um, I always tell my friends that I say that uh, uh, having a good mom is the most lucky thing. <laughs> you, but my mom <laughs> did a uh, watch. Um, you know the um, there was some a uh, Chinese herbs magazine, mm. yeah. So my mom she asked a lot. So she asked his friend, "Hey, do you know cancer patient? What should they eat? Any any uh, remedies they could get?" So my mom she she get one mag one magazine and then she said, "Hey, there's not nothing about breast cancer." She contact the editor. She called. Uh, she bought the whole, uh, from the first first publication to the to wow. the latest one. Yeah. So, well, you cannot imagine uh, the the effort that she put. So so she asked a lot, and then what? So she, everything she tried. I mm. think I had good a good appetite because I tried a lot of things. Mm. And your husband? Rather than oh, sorry. Uh, some sorry. people, they will say uh, you having cancer you're on treatment. You don't eat this and you don't eat that. Yeah. At first, at the first two weeks, my mom did that. She said, "Restricted me. You only eat fish. It's only steamed fish. Mm. I think with the soya sauce and then without a little bit of salt. I said, tasteless. How you eat? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot eat. Oh, and then I was uh, really, uh, I think I was very angry. And then I said, mom, if you do this, I don't want to eat anything. I don't want to eat at all. So I, I discussed. I said, mom, can you let me eat that? And then I checked with doctor. Doctor said, As long as you has appetite, you can eat anything. Because you know, cancer, the chemo will kill all the cancer cells. Even the they will, everything you eat is is killed. Mm. So why don't you eat? Mm. So my mom understand. Mm. So after that, so everything A B A to Z, she let me try. Mm. If I cannot take it, she said you will go to toilet anyway. If you cannot take it, so the good thing you absorb. So I think yeah, this uh, I think this made me feel okay lah, mm. okay lah. Where was your husband? Was your husband with you during those uh the therapy sessions and everything, or was it your your family? Yes, uh, he he was the driver at that time, and then his role is a little bit special. It's like he's the how to say is the uh psychology psycho psychologist. psychologist. Yeah, because he cannot cook, <laughs> and he cannot he uh he doesn't know the med. So so every time I see doctor, so he 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 went with me, and then so he's just a companion. He's, he's there for your for moral support. Yeah, yeah, moral support. I think that is a very important uh, psychology support. Uh, when I think all of us we need this on the cancer patient, the support from the family. Mm. You no need to do anything, but you just there. You just there. Mm. Then we will know. Yeah. Mm. So in your is, mind, is, though, Swili, in your mind, mm. what kept you going through the treatment? Like, what was your end goal, and what kept you going? What kept you strong? I want to live. That is my sentence. I told my doctor. I said, doctor, I want to live. You tell me, uh, what should I do? I said, I'm still young. I said, uh, haven't a lot of uh, things I haven't done before. I want to travel, mm. and I want to have my family. Uh, I said, I have not have enough. I said, this should be a colorful life to me. And also, I asked doctor. I said, doctor, what are the chances of a cancer patient, uh, to recover? She said, very high. You know, mm. breast cancer has the highest cure cure rate. Mm. I said, yeah. I think the confidence that she uh, doctors give me, I think is really uh, it's like a booster to me. Mm. So I think I always think that I could recover. Mm. I think that makes me always everything is today. I must take. I said I can go. I can. I can go for it. Mm. And you will recover. And you have ten years said, ago, have. right? This you were thirty two yeah. only at the time. Yes, now forty two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but yeah, still yeah. cancer-free, right? Yes, cancer-free. Mm. Do yes. you worry that it will ev- return? You, if I if I tell you I'm not worried, I think that should you will not believe. That is worry, mm. but the cancer-free doesn't mean that it's a no. But what I can do, I I I do mm. uh, the screening every year, the blood test, whatever that current uh, medical uh, technology they can provide, then I do. Mm. So I just follow the guidelines. Mm. If it comes back, I will say I have done my best. Mm. But I think it will not visit me again. I think no. I think it's as long as uh, you believe that you are okay. I think here the mental is quite important. Mm. If you, if 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 you you can manage your stress. Uh, if I we might link back, I think why I would get cancer. I can stress might be one of the major things. Yeah, it's a long term. You think you're okay, but actually you're not okay because the body really give you reaction. Mm. So now I think I will have a self talk. I said, it's really how you today? You you okay? How you recently? I think it's a communication between myself. It's very important. Mm. Uh, did this you, is the way. Did you yeah? uh, go back to work after all your therapy sessions and you were feeling better? Uh, I think immediately after uh, after my radiation, yeah, I, I look for jobs. But uh, I would ch- be frankly speaking, it's quite hard to get a job. Really difficult to get a job, mm. and it took me half half year to get my job. Even it is in a different industry, I went back to my industry. I get an offer, but then you know what? The I I was hired, mm. but but the, but the boss asked me, "Where well, is it? Why you have a gap mm. for eight months? Where were you?" Mm. I said, uh, "I had cancer, so I on treatment now. I recovered. So the next thing I shouldn't pay you that high." That his is what he said, and he said, "Are you going to die?" <gasps> oh, and then I think I, oh, that boss really make me. I said, I said, doctor. So after that, I call my doctor. I said, doctor, can you write me a letter? You prove that I recovered, and then I get the job. I'm fit for work. Of course, I did not take that job, and then I, 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 I hunted for another job. So, uh, my friend recommend me to another industry, and I was lucky. So they accept me as a junior position. So I start all over again. But, so yes. But are you happy at work though? Because earlier you mentioned stress. You don't know that you might have stress and everything. Was that one of the things that you were concerned of looking for a job that wasn't so stressful? Uh, I think I I must go back to 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 job because I financially I need a I need a job <laughs> to sustain for life. Yeah. But then it's like I manage how to say so work life balance everything when I cannot. When it's time to you need to rest, you must say, "Hey, you need to rest." Because uh, after the treatment, your body for sure. I think um, after the treatment for five years, your body is not normal mm. compared to the old times. You will feel tired. You will feel you will feel easily sleepy. You feel, and then I think I have short term memory loss a bit. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. So uh, I, I manage I manage myself is like uh, how to say when I when I realize I cannot. I, We stop. Change is attitude to work. I I rechange my attitude. And so work cannot be finished, but I do my best. So, but I tell my boss. So my my boss he 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 knows my case, and then but he happy with my performance. So appreciate that. Mm, work life balance. That's good. Everyone, everyone is still struggling to <laughs> exactly. find work life balance. I'm just thinking actually. about that. We need to have that as well. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, Sweely, in your opinion, what was the yes. most Important element in your successful fight against cancer was it the good relationship with the doctor, was it the support from the family, or was it being mentally and physically strong? I would say all all come into part, mm. but I, I maybe I'll describe the process that you can understand. I think from the diagnosis time. So I I get the inform the knowledge that I have is a play important role because that affect my decisions. I get I I ask the doctors the outcome so I know what is happening next. So in that by that time I had the confidence that what is next will happen. So I am ready. So in my mentally I know that doctors uh, what will happen. So I get ready. Mm. I prepare in advance. And then my the second is my medical team. I really trust them. 
So anything that's abnormal, I will quickly go back to hospital. So I, 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 I no delay. Uh, that is my, 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 my concern. I don't want to delay because I remember doctor said, they said <laughs> early treatment is the key thing. So I always put in my early treatment, early treatment. And then second thing is a uh, family support, really. Family support is not only saying that uh, they, they always give you, but you must take. I think, no, I think they understand me. Sometimes I don't want to, I'm tired or visitors came to my house. I know people are always concerned about you, but they can't. But I told, I told them that you don't visit me. Mm-hmm. When I'm ready, I will go out. So my family, they pro- protect me. They will say that it's really today she's not well. So maybe you can, we know that now. Mm-hmm. So that, and the, that is the support la, on that one. Mm-hmm. And the third one is the, um, is the financial. I'm not sure how many agree with me, but I would say is that because that time, I think I, I do not worry about my medical fee. And then I, I have uh, do not worry about my job, so I can fully concentrate, uh, fully concentrate in cover. I, I do not worry that my boss, uh, how could I rec- back to work? And then what about my bill, something like that. So I think that's everything really play um, a puzzle. Mm. Mm. Wow. Did you join a support group for breast cancer uh, warriors? Uh, yes, I. I appreciate, really thankful to BCWA, the Breast Cancer Welfare Association. By the time I had my first surgery, I think when I wake the second day, already someone beside my bed. So they say that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from BCWA, I want to give you some support, so they give me some pamphlets and brochure. I'm still happy with me. And so now actually I'm uh, one of the committee there. So now I'm starting to give uh, support to the patients. And then sometimes uh, I do give sharings mm. to my colleagues. Yeah, to my colleagues. And then I encourage them to do the monthly self-check. Yeah, and tell my relatives and friends. Very important. You all must do. Mm. Actually, when you woke up the first time, right? And then the, the person from BCWA was there. How important was that for you? Mm? How important was the support from the support group? Like, in your in your journey to recovery very important because they were survivors so whatever they went through i will be i will be going through so that the work and the confidence I, I think i feel very good i said ah you are survivors then you survive mm. <laughs> i think that's the day you survive so the confidence and then i asked a question they said of course the first time i seen it, i said i said uh can you lift out the things and I read through myself? Mm. But after I, I, I discharge, yeah, when I okay, I, I went to the association, I visited them. And so everything that I, I do know, I will ask, I communicate with them. I said, uh, is, it, is this normal? Is this feeling normal? Is this feeling normal? And then I said, yeah, it's okay. No worry. You wanna <laughs> so. uh, <laughs> I think that time, yeah, when you see them, uh, you feel good. You just feel good. And then you feel the confidence will in you and say, Ay, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's very normal. Mm. Mm. Then you can, you will be okay. Because I think from a survivor telling you it will be okay is different from someone who's never gone through it before telling you it is okay because you don't know it, right? Yes. Even though I said I'm not feeling well, I said I, I describe the feelings. They, it's quite abstract to them. They mm. do not know how it feels. But when you tell the survivors, that they know it. They say, you feel this, right? Yeah, 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 I feel this. Mm. And then they say, ah, after a few days, uh, you were gone. So perhaps you can manage with this. I, 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 let's say an example. If the mouth sore, you have ulcers, so you will feel pain, you cannot eat. Mm. So I say, I cannot, if you have ulcers, how you eat, you cannot put into your mouth. And then so the survivors, they say, okay, you can put them into ice cube. So let's say the soup, you just put into the refrigerator, you make it an ice cube. So when you want to eat, you just take the ice so you can eat. So uh, that when you, you will not feel the pain and then you can get the you can get the nutrient as well. I say, see, this is what the cancer survivors will do. They know this. But the other people, they will say, you let it dry, you try lah, you try lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So mm, it's different. Interesting. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> now, Sili, yeah. um, lastly, what would you say to someone? Um, who is going through uh, something similar in their lives, going struggling through cancer maybe or cancer treatment, specifically breast cancer? 
Um, I would advise to those uh, to my friends there who is on treatment. I would say it's like uh, uh, just believe to yourself that uh, what you want. If you want to leave, you must seek for uh, help. You must seek for help. There are many uh, source out there. Your medical team, the support group, even your family. Do not keep it to yourself because there are a lot of us out there. And then this, uh, what I will say. But for those, I would say it's like because now I'm really encouraging on the early detection, safe life. Early detection is really important. Some some people, uh, they know there's something wrong, but they but they do not take any action. They keep quiet. Hmm. It's me. Oops, we lost. This basic treatment, this does not help. So you know, so I would say it's like awareness is very important. Awareness says that how you must. If you love your please take care of yourself. Go for sick for treatment. Yeah, this is what I will encourage. Can you repeat that last line because you broke up a bit? It's like if you love yourself. Huh? I forget what I said. Uh. <laughs> something about <laughs> said, if, you, if love you love yourself, yourself <laughs> go seek treatment early. Uh, something like that. Yeah. yeah. If you love yourself, uh, yeah, if you love yourself, you must seek for treatment early. Mm. Yeah. The, Early detection, safe life. The detection is not only detected something wrong, but the detect is also related to treatment. Mm. You must you must do something. You do not wait that mm. because the cancer is you cannot control anyway. So I think we have all fa- we love our family, but the first thing you must love yourself. That's the most important thing. Without you, your family wouldn't be a family. Yeah, this is what I want to say. How early can Women go through mammogram checks. Forty years old. Forty years old. Yes, but above eighteen, but above eighteen years old, they will encourage the teenagers. They can do a, a monthly uh, breast self examination. We saw the BSC mm. is a breast self examination, which is uh, could be done uh, from the seventh to ten days after the first day of menstrual cycle. Mm. So let's say two days is a menstrual cycle started. The seven to ten days, you pick a number lah. So I said, dear, the eight, a lot number eight. So I pick number eight. So that time we have a steps dear. How do you do the examination? So because most of the, uh, the breast cancer, uh, they must have symptoms. Mostly they have symptoms. Maybe they are they are lump, maybe they are leakage, maybe uneven size, or maybe they are redness. So if it if you know that because if you check every month, you will observe that you will know that a hey, this is something different. Mm. So that's create alarm. Mm. When you create alarm, you quickly go for doctors. So doctor will monitor. Mm. If not, then okay. Then we just maybe half a year later we come back to follow up to monitor. If not, they will be okay. Then we leave it. Mm. Because yeah. now my younger the cancer age is getting younger. Yeah, yeah. So every, this yeah. should be taught in school. I yeah, feel yeah. like in high school right. before the kids leave before girls wow. leave high school. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sweetie, for this very nice chat.